Hello and welcome to Tile Coach. I'm Isaac Ostrom. Thank you for being here. So one of the things that got me into the tile trade and has kept me here was the ability to create beautiful, permanent, artistic designs like I did on this shower pan. So let's get started on installing the tile and grate. There are some considerations to make. Basically, you want to try to avoid any sliver cuts that would end up at the walls. So I always just check to make sure I don't have a tiny cut that's not going to look good against the walls. Uh, but what I try to do is center everything off of the shower grate, which is already installed. Here you see we have our Flow FlowFX bonding flange already installed with our RSS sheet membrane down. I'm going to go ahead and mark where the drain is going to go. I'm going to use uh, a Sharpie to give me a better line here. And the Sharpie is actually good because once I cut the Sharpie line off, that's about a sixteenth wide, that'll give me a good grout joint here. So you can see my drain layout completely centered in the mosaic of this tile. I'm going to take uh, the tileable portion of the grate and center it, and then I'm going to do the same thing. So now you can see I have the inside part centered and this is what I'm actually going to cut out and put into the grate carrier. I'm going to have to go in about another sixteenth, which I will go ahead and measure a sixteenth. So I measured in another sixteenth because the outside of the frame is wider than the inside, so I had to give myself a sixteenth. You could also do this with a tape measure, a speed square, whatever you need to do. But now I know that I need the inside portion here and this cut out. Now that I have this part loose, I can just take this over to the saw, make my cuts, and I'll do another dry lay. I'll get my grate carrier centered. With these two inch hexagons, it does line up really nicely. You can see how balanced and the symmetry going on here. And I'll just place my cuts in here just to get a dry fit to make sure. And these stone mosaics have a little bit of play in them because they're natural stone, they're not perfect. So this is gonna work out just fine. Put my pieces back in exactly where they go. And then here is my piece that goes in the grate carrier. And voila, you can see that goes in just right. The thickness of the tile is a little bit thicker than this grate. This natural stone is about, uh, you know, a strong three eighths of an inch. And it's sticking up a little bit proud of the grate here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to shave the back of the tile. I could probably get away if I just wanted to, to sand this edge down because it's natural stone, but with the porcelain tile you wouldn't want to do that. You'd want to shave the back. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the back of this these tiles so that they fit down flush right here. This is accomplished by setting the wet saw blade height to the thickness needed and making several cuts in both directions about a quarter inch apart. I'm also using a piece of RSS wall board so that the small tiles don't fall through the saw tray. After making the score lines, I simply run the tiles through the blade, removing the excess material I need to get the correct thickness. Now that I have the tiles cut, I can dry fit them into the grate to make sure everything lines up. I really like the idea of having the frame around the drain grate. Not only does it create a more defined border, but it also protects the tile as the grate gets removed for periodic cleaning. Everything looks good, so I mix up some thin set and get ready to install the tile. Okay, so before we begin setting the tiles, we need to make sure that we get the appropriate spacers under the grate frame. These spacers come with the FlowFX bonding flanges. So I'm going to use one of the thicker spacers here, put it down and see where we go. So I'm going to put dry lay my tile up next to it, put my grate in, and we're a little low there. Being a little low is okay, so I'm going to put a, a thin one in, and that's just about the right height right there. But you do need to do 
this part before you install any of the tile. It's pretty easy to figure out. So I'm using modified thin set mortar here. Now I'm going to go ahead and insert, put the uh, thinner one in first. Smash it all the way down. Now I'm going to put the other one on. Smash it all the way down. Okay, so that's in. Now we're ready to set the tile. So what I'm using here is modified thin set mortar and a quarter inch by quarter inch notch trowel. This is the appropriate trowel for most two inch mosaics on a shower. You can hold your trowel a little bit flatter and take a little more thin set off, or if you need more, you can hold it more of a 45 degree. Uh, it's a pretty versatile trowel that handles most uh, two inch mosaics. So you can see I comb my thin set mortar all the way up to the edge, the inside edge of the spacer, and I can take the grate, and it's probably a good idea to put a little back butter on this guy. So a little back butter, and now I'm gonna go ahead and just place it right down in on top of those spacers. Go ahead and get that centered. Not push it down too far. Uh, you do have some play in this grate to move around, which is really nice. So you can see how all of the color pops out of this stone when it's wet. I may put a color enhancing sealer on it, I'm not sure. But I'm gonna go ahead and just place my, my tiles right up to the edge of the grate carrier, just flush with it. Okay, now that I have the tiles around the grate set, I need to set the tiles inside of the grate. So I just need to make sure that they're lined up where they are supposed to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and place it right in there, the flow effects carrier. I'll start with, start with the center one. That one's pretty easy to know where it goes. I'm just gonna squish it down real nice. Then I'm pretty sure this one goes here. Let's see, that one goes there. Uh, this one, this one go here. Yeah, that's that color. Then we got this little guy goes right here. This bigger one goes right here. Has to go there. Oh, wait a second. Yeah, that one goes there, and that one goes there. Okay, perfect. So I actually reversed these two here. Now 
Now that the tile is set, it's time to go home for the day, come back tomorrow and we'll get it grouted. The grout I'm using here is Custom's Prism Grout. Now this is a high performance grout similar to Mape Ultra Color FA. It can be used on grout joints from 1 16th to a half inch and has really good color consistency and it says that no sealer is required. The problem with these high performance grouts is that they can become soft, especially when they get wet and the grout can be scraped out fairly easily. If you'd like to see a video I did on testing different grouts, I will include that link in the description below. While I wait for the grout to set up for about 30 minutes, I clean up and do a little bit of exercise to pass the time. I've had a few of you comment, uh, ask me questions about how I stay in shape, and here are a couple of the exercises that I like to do when I have some spare time. I've noticed that grout floats make good handles for doing push-ups. I feel like I get more out of them when I use them, something about having my wrists in this position. I also like to do arm curls with water buckets. Uh, the nice thing about using water buckets is you can fill them up more or less to adjust the weight of the buckets. Uh, these buckets are about half full. Uh, this is about perfect for me. Okay, so I got a good pump in. Let's get back to work. You'll notice that when the stone is wet, the colors pop out and it has a deeper, richer tone as opposed to the more flat and lighter look when the stone is dry. I really like how it looks when it's wet, so after the grout cures, I use a color enhancing sealer to give it the wet look. The nice thing about the Miracle Seal and Enhance is not only does it seal the stone and bring out the color, but it also keeps it as a matte natural finish, not a shiny one. I also need to tell you that uh, the tiling grate only works with the universal bonding flange. It doesn't work with the traditional, the round one that's for going into curdy pans. The tiling grate only works with these universal bonding flanges. If you need to purchase one of these or the tiling grate, I'll put the link in the description below so you can pick those up. So I am really, really happy with how this turned out. And you're probably gonna be seeing me using these tile and grates in most of my installs as I go forward. Uh, doing this little project for filming this video uh, just really reminded me how, how blessed I am to have chosen a career that allowed me to be creative. It's just been an incredible journey. I'm so glad that you have been a part of it, that you're here with me. Uh, I've been doing tile work for over 20 years and I'm so glad I stuck with it. And my hope is, is that by making these videos for you, that it will inspire you to take on your own project or maybe make a career change or jump into something. If you have a creative mind, if you like working with your hands, if you're not afraid of doing hard work, if you feel a sense of purpose by building things for other people, then tile work might be a great career for you. And if you just want to do your own projects and you need help on them, uh, you can go to tilecoach.com. There I have one-on-one -on -one tile coaching where you can sign up and we can spend some time together and I can help you make sure that you get your project done right. There are many things you could have been doing with your time, but you chose to watch this video all the way to the end. And for that, I thank you and I love you and I love being your tile coach and we'll see you on the next video.